So um, there are actually two ways that we can go about this one. I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, the first way is just to start by replacing the y and the x with r sine of theta and r cosine of theta, respectively. Now, in the rectangular system, if we were solving for r, then we would want to move the right side to be on the left side because we want the variable we're solving for, we want it to be on one side. However, in the polar system, we are allowed to do this. We are allowed to divide both sides by r cosine of theta. Okay, so it cancels on the right side. On the left side, we've got r over r. Those cancel. What's sine over cosine? Tangent. So that says tangent of theta is equal to negative 4. This is another way to express um, a linear function because y equals negative 4x is also a linear function. So apparently in the polar system, tangent of theta equals negative 4 graphs as a line. Kind of interesting. Okay. Now the other way that you could have looked at doing this is you could have rewritten this to be y over x and the reason why I would do that is because y over x is equal to the tangent and you would have gotten to the same result. It's just two different ways of looking at it. Now you can't always just divide by x um, to put it in those terms but in this case you can. Okay? Let's do one more. Let's do another circle x minus 2 squared plus y plus 4 squared is equal to 20. Okay. In the rectangular system, just a little review, this is a circle with a center at, let's see here, 2, negative 4. Remember you change the signs. So the x coordinate would be positive 2, the y coordinate would be negative 4 and a radius of the square root of 20, which simplifies to two square roots of 5. If you simplify the radical, just a reminder of that as well. Square root of 20 equals the square root of 4 times square root of 5. Square root of 2 square root of 5. Okay, that's not related to the polar thing, but I just wanted to do that little review about the circle and the radius. Okay, so let's find out how we can express this in polar form. All right, now, you've got to let me know if I lose you somewhere. Replace the x with r cosine of theta. You don't do anything to the minus 2. Replace the y with r sine of theta. You don't do anything with the plus 4 right now. And it's equal to 20. Okay, now, r cosine of theta minus 2 squared. What do we need to do to that? Foil it, because it's a binomial. It's two terms separated by a plus or a minus. We've got to foil that out. So I'm going to take a little extra space, and I'm going to write it twice so that you know when you look back at your notes what happened. You're going to do that same thing with the sign. I'm going to run into my other problem. Okay. So, when we foil this, oh, let me do a second line of numbers. When we multiply the first terms, r cosine of theta times r cosine of theta. r times r is r squared. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared. When we multiply the outside terms, r cosine of theta times negative 2. And when we multiply the inside terms, we get the same thing. So we have minus 2 r cosine theta minus 2 r cosine theta. So that's minus 4 r cosine theta. And then when we multiply the last terms, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 
similar things going to happen with the uh, sine there. Okay, r sine theta times r sine theta is r squared sine squared theta. The outside is going to give us positive 4 r sine theta. The inside is going to give us positive 4 r sine theta. So that's going to give us plus 8 r sine theta. And the last positive 4 times positive 4 is positive 16. Now that looks like just a big old jumbled mess. I'm going to make sure you've got it all down and then we'll, we'll get simplified. Are we good? R sine theta times R sine theta, R times R, is R squared. It's kind of like 2 sine times 2 sine, you multiply the 2's. Alright, so, we're trying to solve for R. We've got r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared. So I'm going to, I know every single term there on the left side does not have an r squared. But you can kind of selectively factor, okay? So I'm going to take the r squared out of those terms. And I can't combine the other stuff. Notice my parentheses ended because I only took the r squared out of those two terms. And then I've just got to write the other stuff. And then I can add the 4 and the 16. 4 and 16 is 20. Okay. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. What can I do with those 20s? They cancel. If I subtract 20 from both sides, then they go away. So this whole thing is equal to 0. Almost there. We're solving for r. Right now we've got r squared and r. Now in the rectangular system, this does not work. Okay, But in the polar system, it does. We are allowed to divide every term by r. You can't do that in the quadratic system or in the rectangular system. You can in the polar system. So that gives us r squared or r is r. These r's cancel, those r's cancel. Zero divided by anything is zero. So Final step, we want r by itself, so we add the 4 cosine and we subtract the 8 sine theta to the other side. That is what this circle looks like in the polar system. So not quite as cut and dry, but it's because it's not centered at the origin, or in the polar system it's not centered at the pole. The other one was. It was just x squared plus y squared, so we could just say r equals the square root of 5. Here, it's centered at 2, negative 4, so that cosine and sine still being in the equation is what's going to shift it over um, to where it needs to be. Okay? So, I would like for you to...